Hello everyone, Ian from Ozen Engineering here. We're gonna get right into building the team workshop problem number three. If you wanna know what this is, what we're doing here, please check out the associated blog for some more information. And without further ado, let's start. All right, let's really quickly build this thing up. It's a very basic geometry and setup, so this shouldn't be too hard. We're gonna open up a 3D design. It should be an eddy current design. Next up, I'm gonna add the material. The only information that's given us on the, on the design is that it's aluminum with a resistivity value of 0 0.3278 times 10 to the eighth ohm meters. So we'll add that. Then you take the reciprocal of that, and that's our um, bulk conductivity set here. Next, we'll create the coil. This is just the standard coil process where you create two cylinders and subtract the inner one. You slice the coil and split those two slices and only keep one of them, and that one is going to be your coil terminal. Similarly, the uh, geometry for the bath is created just with some boxes where you create two more inner boxes and subtract those. Last, I'll just make sure that everything is in the correct position. So that's our geometry created. I'll just make a standard air box around it. And then I'll start assigning my excitations. This is easy. I just need to make a current excitation with a value of 1260 amp turns. The last thing to draw is just a line that goes across the model. I'm going to use this to plot my magnetic field. Uh, so just to that end, I'm going to also want to refine the mesh around this a little bit. And to do that, all I need to do is make this a cylinder with a small diameter. All right, next thing, let's add our analysis. We're going to make it a frequency sweep. Uh, we'll go from 50 to 200, which means our adaptive frequency should be our high frequency, 200. And we're going to go from, like I said, 50 hertz to 200. We'll do step sizes of, of 1 hertz, 150 steps. Click OK. Last thing, check our eddy effects. The goal is to calculate the fields and eddy currents flowing around the limbs of the ladder. Let's keep this on. We don't need them for the cylinder in this case. Now, one last thing, it does want me to move the coils from di um, two different positions. So all I did was set up a parametric analysis where I sweep uh, a movement vector that I put on the coil. Looking at the presentation of the results, it wants a center line 0 0.5 millimeters above the top of the surface of the conducting ladder, which is what I've drawn here. It wants me to present the z direction of the b field along the line so let's get that set up with the fields calculator very easily done this is just grab your quantity b it already has a scalar b uh, scalar z value for us it wants it in millitesla let's multiply this times a thousand so we'll grab a number scalar of a thousand and multiply that in last thing i can uh, last thing I want to do, we'll make it smooth. And this looks good. Let's add this. And with that, we are ready to run our parametric setup. The simulation is complete, so let's go ahead and prepare the report that the document wants. I'm going to just plot the z vector along that line in um, you know, both of the frequencies that we swept and both of the positions that we, we plotted them in. Very easily done. Beautiful results. Let's carry on one more t um, a little bit further. The other thing that we're going to do is uh, plot the current density on the surface of the plate. All right, looks great. Now I also made a vector plot. I wanted to compare, I wanted to compare this to the LS Dyna version of the same experiment, um, same maximum. We get very similar results. Yeah, see, they actually hit the 12 millitesla line uh, with their experiment compared to their numerical values, 
whereas for mine and they're doing are plotting off of their max uh their maximum from the phase and position that they had so if i look at my same version that is the red curve here doesn't quite hit the 12 millitesla line i'm here at uh let's see grab a marker 11.32 millitesla now comparing this with the numerical result this is the problem three bath plate position two at 50 hertz which is the uh, curve that we chose there in red uh, 50 hertz yep position two and we can see it does look like the measured value solid line hits a little bit closer to what we have in our simulation. Either way, I would say that we have good agreement with the measured values. That's gonna be it for this one. If you guys have any questions or if there's anything that you wanna see simulated, let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, this has been Ian from Ozen Engineering. Thanks for watching.